little treats, it's sponge cake. For this video, I'm gonna be trying out the Gyaru lifestyle for 14 days in order to fully immerse myself in the subculture and learn more about it as well as myself and hopefully inspire others to do the same. Each day I'll be doing a different sub-style and eventually I'm going to kind of venture out into kind of different inspiration, maybe get inspired by other J fashion styles or even find specific photos to base my looks off of. By the end of this video, I'm hoping to be able to answer a few questions. Do I see myself being a gal indefinitely? What's a revelation that I had over the course of this journey? Which substyle would I choose if I had to pick one to wear indefinitely? And what advice would I have to other baby gals trying it out for the very first time? I'm a little bit nervous about how big of an adjustment it's going to be, but I'm also really, really excited. Not only will I be doing a different substyle every day, but I will also be doing a different activity related to gal each day, whether it's looking through scans of magazines like Egg, or doing my nails, or going out for like a Starbucks drink or something like that. So I'm really excited to see how it will all go and kind of keep you guys updated along the journey. So this is probably gonna be a little bit of a longer video, so let's get right to it. LOL. So I just realized while editing this that I'm doing this whole Gyaru challenge, especially for those not familiar or semi-familiar with the style, and I haven't even explained what it is yet. So my bad. <laughs> According to the Himekaji Gyaru blogger Hello Lizzie B, Gyaru is a fashion style and subculture that originated in Shibuya, a district in Tokyo, Japan back in the 90s against the stereotypical beauty standard of having pale skin and dark hair. Gyaru, also known as gals, wore dark tans and exaggerated makeup, which was a shock to Japanese society. It has since developed quite a lot into many substyles, which I'm going to dive into into this video, um, but the main idea is still there. So for day one, I'm wearing Kogyaru, also known as Kogal, which is the substyle based off of schoolgirls who would still wear their uniforms to hang out in Shibuya. For all of my Gyaru makeup styles, I'll be using my usual base of Maybelline foundation and concealer, and adding more contour and highlight than I normally would. For Kogal, I didn't hold back on the blush and drew on my under eyeliner in a droop shape to make my eyes bigger in the gal spirit. I added falsies from Amazon and for the bottom, I cut some falsies up to add individual tufts for a dramatic but balanced look. This is a method specific to my eyes I found which works. You might prefer a totally different approach. Because Kogals would still wear the uniform, I'm wearing black loafers, a pleated skirt, and a white button up untucked to look like I'm all cool and rebellious. They'd also switch to loose socks and have a lot of accessories, so I'm wearing leg warmers, my deco phone case, an otter plushie bag, and some arm candy, as well as a Karomi tote bag as a nod to their love for bags with status. I normally wouldn't wear the stockings, but it was freezing out and I knew it'd be walking a lot, so here we are. I did get mistaken as a prospective undergrad student instead of a prospective grad student, which would have been more appropriate for my age, even though I wasn't actually applying there on the college campus, which made me kind of hyper aware of how society would perceive and treat me in the style. It's a super fun style, but ultimately, I think I'd probably almost never strictly wear it unless I'm trying to make some kind of specific statement. So for day two, I'm wearing Tsuyome Gyaru. Tsuyome tend to wear big lashes with lighter colored makeup, so I wore thicker lashes and the same long tufts of lashes on the bottom. And my skin is already brown, so I also stuck with brown and gold colors for my eyeshadow and lipstick. Because Tsuyome gals tend to wear cheetah and other animal prints, I pulled out the one top that I have that's closest to an animal print since I don't actually own any. The stripes look a bit zebra to me with cheetah color, so I thought it might work. Other big attributes to the style are denim shorts, big belts, and leg warmers, so here you'll see I am wearing each of these. I don't own any big belt, so I wore the one belt that I have that at least has gold in it, since Tsuyome seem to love gold. I also wore my big curly wig since Tsuyome tend to have voluminous curled hair, and this shade of brown seemed to complement my skin more, and it's also one of the accepted bleached tones. This style is honestly my favorite other than Himikaji, which you will see later in this video. 
I feel super sexy, but also still myself. Like this is how I dress if I'm like feeling in a sexy, mature mood. That said, I don't think I'd go out like this by myself, at least for a good while, because the amount of catcalling and other unwanted attention is like through the roof. Okay, I know my makeup style is getting a little repetitive here, but I wanted to focus more on refining the make according to the substyle than trying to do too many different things. So for Agajo here on day three, I stuck with a thicker falsy, same bottom lash technique, and went with purples, pinks, and gold tones for my eyeshadow and lip colors. According to Gyaru.fandom, Agajo is the substyle generally, but not exclusively worn by Hostess. It is very glamorous and feminine and is characterized by big hairstyles, the black and pink color combination, and lingerie pieces. For the black and pink color combo, I wore what I like to call my e-girl skirt from AliExpress, as that was all I owned closest to the style. And I noticed Agajos often wear bows, so I wore my bow lingerie set. I know red is a less common color for Agajos, but I thought the benefit of a lingerie piece with bows outweighed the drawbacks. For the hair, I wore my same wig from Amazon. Lace is also a big one, so I'm wearing my lace arm warmers and stockings along with some kitten heeled sandals. I don't know what I would do without my thrifted blazer as I think that's what held the outfit together. Overall, this was a fun one, but it's a little bold and revealing for me, so I think I'd wear this style for indoor date nights, but not really outside. For day four, I wore Goshiku, which as you might guess, incorporates goth fashion and style. According to the same Gyaru Wiki, it is characterized by precise dark makeup, which is why I opted for dark eyeshadow and a clean pair of underlashes. They wear black, white, gray, or blonde hair, which is why you see me with blonde hair here. And I could have worn black hair, but I wanted to go for something more recognizable as still Gyaru since it's my first time and I can miss a lot of subtleties. Clothing is mostly black or gray, of course, yet more subtle than Roku Gyaru, which you will see later in this video. Shoes include platforms, so of course I wore my Demonias here. This day was a little weird as it was pouring rain out and I had a lot of meetings so I couldn't keep this look on for the whole day nor go out in it later. It was kind of a wake up call and made me start to doubt if I can really upkeep a Gyaru lifestyle indefinitely. For day five, I'm wearing Hadi, which comes from the Japanese word Hade, meaning flashy or in your face. And it is known for its bright color palette, focusing almost completely on neons with various loud prints and black accents. It combines American and British styles and some often think of it as the Gyaru substyle closest to scene. For today, I did more of a black underline with a cat eye to lean into the 80s feeling, and of course, pinks and purples to go with the hot pink in my outfit. I thought the hot pink and black stripes on this long sleeve top would be perfect for the hottie spirit. This style also reminds me a lot of Avril Lavigne's style, and I feel like she would wear trip pants like these. I wish I had an animal hoodie, but I settled for a black beanie and wore my Demonia platform sandals to show off my black and pink My Melody socks. I also thought a big, flashy bag like this Hello Kitty one would go well with a substyle. On this day, I definitely felt a bit of a crash. I went to Target and got Starbucks drink, which qualified as a gal activity in my book, but by the time I got home, I was totally wiped. I also had to take a pause the day before for an in-person work event, so I think that made me extra aware of my limitations with Gyaru, and if I'd still really be gal enough if I had to take a bunch of pauses like that. For day six, I'm wearing Himekaji, which is the casual princess style, not to be confused with Hime Gyaru, I find their makeup to be a little more understated but girly, so I went with my smaller underlashes again, wispy top lashes, and a pink gold for my eyeshadow and just above my underlashes. I also added lots of blush and a pink glossy lip. Other than blonde, Himikaji also tend to wear light shades of brown hair that's a little less over the top, so I wore my usual brown hair. Liz Lisa is a big brand for Himikaji and I happen to already own some, so I thought my Liz Lisa top and cardigan would be perfect. They're like my two favorite pieces right now, so I was really excited. I would have preferred a looser skirt, but alas, I only have pleated right now, so I wore this brown pleated skirt here. I also wore my Hello Kitty Jimmy Paul bag since Himikaji tend to wear designer bags. It was also quite chilly, so I wore white stockings along with my kitten heeled sandals. 
This is definitely my favorite substyle other than Suyume, especially because I can find a lot more occasions to wear it and feel totally in my skin and confident. On this day, I went to one of my favorite cafes here in LA and had a massive career crisis, but hey, I looked cute while doing it, which is all that matters. For day 7 here, I'm in Hime Gyaru, which is the ultimate princess style of Gyaru with a lot of soft colors and big hair. Hime Gyaru is generally more dramatic, so I wore my thicker falsies again with the big individual wisps under my eyes. I also tried this style with a cat eye, which I think worked well together. Of course, I wore this brown wig again to emulate the beehive look as best I can. Hime Gyarus also tend to wear short dresses, so I went for this dress I got on Depop along with the Lizzie's a cardigan that I also got from Depop and I had a lot of fun with the accessories including my lace gloves and parasol and my sheer thigh highs. Hime Gyarus also wear big designer bags so of course I brought back the same Hello Kitty laptop bag. I went on a little cafe day in this outfit which I vlogged and is up on my channel right now. I'll leave a link somewhere here for you to watch. Definitely not a style I can wear every day but I feel so cute and princessy I would totally wear this again on special occasions. For day 8, I'm wearing Roma Gyaru, which is a style similar to Hime Kaji, except its colors are more subtle and muted. Makeup is very simple, so I'm wearing my smaller underlashes with gold eyeshadow that blends with my skin tone. By this day, my skin is very unhappy with me, so I'm taking this simpler makeup day today as an opportunity to give my skin a break from foundation. Hair ranges from dark brown to blonde, so I'm wearing my usual brown hair here. There were a lot of things that I wish I had for this, but didn't, so this was actually probably the most challenging substyle for me. I would have preferred over-the-knee boots, but settled for the chunky knee-high boots that I already own, along with a pair of thigh highs. I would have preferred a brown pair of knitted thigh highs, but only owned black or white, which I matched with my white Liz Lisa cardigan. The bag was perfect, though. This style would require me to do some more shopping, but it would be all items I can style for other looks as well. I love its simplicity, but ultimately, I much prefer Himekaji. For day 9, I'm wearing Ora Ora, which is a tougher style of Gyaru that focuses on dark clothes and being rebellious. There is a heavy focus on the eyes for the style, so I went with big falsies and darkened my waterline for an edgier look. They also wear nude lips, which is what I went for here, and I skipped on the blush this time. I am also wearing blonde here, since I also felt this wig's shape fit the style well. I was originally going to wear black sweatpants, but opted for jeans instead as I was worried that might make it look like I'm wearing a different substyle. The top has a bit of a bandana shape and a gold chain strap, which I thought was perfect, as Ora Ora gals seem to love gold and have a rebellious nature. I also noticed that Ora Ora gals wear lots of heels and jackets, so I brought back the same heeled sandals and a bomber. I had a lot of fun learning about this substyle and felt like I looked totally different from usual in a good way. Ora Ora gals tend not to wear many accessories either, so that was an interesting challenge. That said, it's probably not a style I'd wear often, at least for right now. For day 10, I'm in Roku Gyaru, which is the substyle that incorporates rock and visual K. In my mind, they're the punk girlies of Gyaru. Hair can be absolutely any color here, so I decided to have fun and wear a white wig this time because, well, I can. Makeup is very smoky, so I did my best here to achieve that smoky look and included a bit of that under the eye. Red lips are also common, so I decided to have fun with that too. This was one of the easiest for me to style, I think, because I was into punk fashion as a teen and I happen to have quite a few accessories for it, from the massive choker to the studded belt. This slipknot teat I've had since the 10th grade and I thrifted this plaid skirt that goes with many different styles. Thigh highs and demonious were an obvious choice. My personal favorite cherry on top though is the black Kuromi bag because it has the perfect balance between punk with the black and girly with the velvet and the ruffles. This just made my teen self smile so hard because this is in many ways the ultimate way that I would have wished to dress, but I just didn't have the allowance nor freedom to. That said, I definitely think that I've grown out of this style, so it's just kind of a throwback for me now. For day 11, I am wearing Amikaji, which according to the same Gyaru fandom site, translates as American style. It is bright, colorful, and inspired by sort of this fictionalized, stereotypical idea of America. 
The makeup is simple, but I took a few liberties here by making the eyes still big and wearing a pink glossy lipstick. Graphic tees are a staple, so I wore my only graphic tee other than the Slipknot t-shirt, which is this Black Lives Matter Decora tee made by Hard Decora. Jeans and hats are also common. The hat I'm wearing is actually Game Grumps merch. Particularly like the way brown hair looks with this style, so I opted for my usual brown hair. I'm also wearing my Air Force One since sneakers are also a staple. Belts are also big, but looking back at this video, it's such a dark color that I think I would go without it next time. I didn't really have any other belts, so I just kind of went with the first one I had. This substyle gives me such decora vibes, mainly because of the bright, happy energy it exudes. It took everything in me not to throw on some face glitter. I went grocery shopping this day for homemade hot pot and I felt super comfortable the whole time. And this is the most comfortable I felt in any of the substyles. That said, it's not really my taste. It kind of also reminds me a little too much of 2015 US American fashion with the snapbacks and the yellow t-shirts, which let's just say is not my favorite favorite era of fashion. Day 12 is when things are starting to get a little fun and I venture outside of the substyles. For this day, I ran the Sanrio Instagram filter and landed on little twin stars, so I built an outfit around that. I'm honestly glad I didn't get something more common like my Melody or Kuromi or Hello Kitty because this encouraged me to challenge myself a little bit more. I kept my makeup pretty simple here and focused on pink colors on my eyes, cheeks, and lips. I did lean into Himikaji Gyaru a bit because I felt like the princess gals would be the most likely to create a little twin star themed outfit. So I wore my big honey brown wig and started with my little twin stars purse to work my outfit around that. I wanted to keep it casual so I wore my white shorts and a cropped pink blouse. I stuck with white and pink as best I can so I wore another white cardigan I own to lift up the top and my white and pink leg warmers which are also such a gal staple. I did start to feel some impatience here again on this day, I think because I was also rushing to host this hot pot Friendsgiving hangout in my house. I felt really impressed by how much quicker I've gotten with gal makeup while experimenting, but it was also another reminder that I'd probably have to limit how often I dress Gyaru. For day 13, I went with an image that's been sitting on my Gyaru Pinterest board for forever. I'm not sure what substyle we'd categorize her outfit as, but I'm living for whatever it is. The camera might not do it justice, but I felt really genuinely happy with how my makeup turned out because this was the first time I filled my eye droop with black and I actually felt happy with it. I wore my subtler underlashes with the style and for the first time I actually like them better than the wispy style. I'd say I wore a mix between the two people in the photo in terms of color. I thought my pink fluffy jacket and black jean skirt would emulate the one on the left very well while incorporating the pink on the right. I couldn't see their legs, but I imagine leg warmers, once again, would go well with this code. I added black thigh highs since it was quite cold and I actually like the two together. My friend was having a film screening that night and I felt so good and in my skin in this outfit, even while in public. For this final day, I decided to create a code inspired by probably my favorite Harajuku fashion style, which is Decora. For those of you who don't know, Decora revolves around wearing a crap ton of accessories and often, but not always, features lots of bright colors and mini patterns. I didn't go based off of any particular photo for the outfit, but I did take inspiration from one of Sandy Taboo's makeup photos. Their makeup talent is absolutely incredible, and I wanted to try something bold today. I definitely messed up quite a lot on the makeup, but I'm still really proud of trying in the first place and seeing how far I've come with my confidence in makeup since the start of this challenge. Ultimately, this is still a Gyaru fit, so I kept my usual brown hair, wore small jean shorts, and wore my pink jacket I think that has a very Gyaru spirit. I thought a colorful top like this one would give off the Decora vibe without actually stepping too deep into Decora. I had planned to add a bunch of hair clips, but I realized it probably wouldn't have made the style much better. What do you think? Should I have added a bunch more hair clips? I also skipped on the face glitter since I already had such a bold Gyaru make on. My only regret is not having more bracelets and other colorful jewelry to pile on. This is definitely one of my favorite looks and I'd happily go out in it. Completing this look just made me so much more aware of how far I can go with Gyaru or even Gyaru inspired outfits if I don't stick to the lifestyle. 
It's also a testament to how flexible Gyaru really is once you get the basics down. I don't know if I mentioned it early in this video, but I originally meant for this video to be this over the span of 30 days, but I ended up doing half of that because I would have ended up like doubling all the styles, like the sub styles, basically like cycling through the same ones again, which I thought might not be super engaging to watch. And also just started to feel like I was having diminishing returns and like I want to build off of what I've discovered through the style instead of repeating it over again, just for the sake of doing it and having more content to share. It's kind of insane how I've transformed over the course. Like my makeup style right now is the boldest it's ever been yet. Super, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like, it makes more sense around my eye shape, even though obviously there's ways I can improve on it. I feel a lot more confident in my makeup abilities. I'm aware that I'm learning, but I'm also aware of the fact that I can make it look nice and if I mess up, it's okay, I can fix it. I have more of a toolbox on how to fix my mistakes now, which makes me feel more confident enough to get out of my comfort zone and be okay with messing up some more. Also like <laughs> my nails, <laughs> like this is so amazing. I talk more about like my process doing these nails myself for the very first time in another video, but it's just like, wow, holy crap. And I just like, I feel so, I have so many emotions. Can't believe it's only been like two weeks. I feel like it's been at least a couple months. It's very hard to tell how long or like how much effort it's going to feel like when it's something that you enjoy. Like I love fashion and I love dressing up. So it was hard to tell. I'm just gonna read these questions off of my Mac and maybe build off of my answers to those. So do I see myself doing gal indefinitely? Yes and no. I feel like this is a style that is very special to me in my heart, especially after this challenge that I've done for myself. I've learned so much about so many of the sub styles and so much about myself too. And I felt like I had such an opportunity to just tap into my confidence. And I especially felt that way, you know, like doing my nails and like consuming like the media, like doing para para was a huge, huge part of me feeling like, just like happy with my stage in life, happy with my womanhood and happy with like my life in general. Like I just felt like it was like celebrating who I am and like my where I am in life and stuff like that. I wouldn't be surprised if I dabble in a bunch of other styles and I end up coming back to Gyaru and doing it like quite frequently over the future or like continuing to have this kind of Gyaru philosophy um, in the way I dress, the way I carry myself, even if I'm not quite necessarily within that exact niche. Nails for instance, I can see myself continuing to do my nails like this, but on a more toned down way. So maybe like shorter and with smaller charms, but like a lot of charms. I definitely don't think I can do Gyaru every single day, but I can definitely see myself doing it like every weekend, like all the time during like holidays, or just like if I feel like dressing up and going somewhere, but not because I have to. It took a lot of time, like a lot of time. What is a revelation that I had over this journey? I feel very much like I can continue to do little challenges like this with every style. And slowly, I really will begin to hone down like what it is that's really like for me and my style specifically. I think that it was a like a confirmation that I don't think I can really stick to any one niche style or any one specific style because I don't know, dude, like <laughs> I go through so many eras and they can span as short as a day, you know what I mean? Or as long as months or even years. And it's completely unpredictable. I have no control over it. My inspiration takes me where it does. I don't need to stick to a specific style, but it definitely does help to dive in to specific styles to see what I like and what I don't like. Which sub style would I wear if I decide to go gal indefinitely? Again, I wouldn't stick to a specific style, I don't think. I think I would try to make it my own. 
for better or for worse, maybe I would end up pissing off, off some people because maybe I wouldn't follow like certain rules that I should follow. But um, that being said, if I had to choose one, I would choose most likely Hime Kaji for like every day and Tsuyome for when I'm feeling sussy and want to go out or like be with friends and like do like, I don't know, like go out out, you know what I mean? The reason I say Hime Kaji is because A, like I'm drawn to a lot of like the, the prints of Hime Kaji, I'm drawn to a lot of like, just like the style in general. But on the other hand, it's also very friendly to my lifestyle. Again, like with going to work and stuff, putting aside the fact that it would take a long time <laughs> to get ready <laughs> every single day, it's very um, friendly to um, basically like office wear. So there's ways that I could wear like himikaji like 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 cardigans or like blouses and stuff like that and look, you know, semi-professional at an office. Nails for instance, they don't necessarily have to be as long. They can be a little shorter and like they can be like a nice little almond, is it almond? Little rounded shape. The styles can be pretty simple. You don't need to go crazy with the charms. So like for like an everyday style I love that and it's casual, it's like princessy but casual. There's a lot of flexibility in it. You can wear dresses, you can wear skirts. Um, if you really want to push it, you can wear shorts. I've seen Hello Lizzie B even wear jeans and I think Hello Lizzie B is a huge reason why I feel like I could be more comfortable doing it because I see how she does it. As for Suyome, I would not be able to wear that every day. I would have to reserve that for like evenings outside of work and I would also have to be with friends um, and or my boyfriend or stuff like that. I would have to be with people to feel more safe wearing it. What advice would I give to other people trying out Gyaru? Now, again, I'm also just trying it out. I did it for like two weeks. It felt like a lot longer than that, but it was two weeks. So I'm not like this huge gal veteran, but I think that based off of this experience, I do have a little bit of advice I can share for other newbies like me and people dabbling. And it's definitely just dive in and do it. Please, please, please. I encourage you to like do this challenge too. Like, and if there's some sub-styles you don't feel like trying, you know, others you want to try more of, or others that you want to try that wasn't in this video, please do that. Um, part of why I did this challenge is because I wanted to encourage other people to also do the same. And I felt like this style especially is not as well documented on the internet, especially because of like most of the blogs in which people talk about and stuff, like they're all like inactive. Fewer and fewer people are actually wearing it, but like it's still extremely interesting um, what you still can find. And I just wanted to bring everything that I could find together into like one format. Because what I realized is that what's super, super helpful is just creating like some kind of structure if you cannot find it from someone else and like I, I felt like by doing this challenge I finally created like a pathway on how to navigate this because it was very very like overwhelming at first just like seeing all the different avenues you can go and all the ways you can mess up and speaking of messing up please just do it even if you mess up even if it's like weird at first or you're worried about what other people will think just like try it out because you never know like how it'll actually be until you're actually doing it. There's a lot of like ideas you can have on how it'll go and like some of them will be confirmed and sometimes you'll also have like be surprised. I'm definitely victim to overthinking a lot. I spent so much time curating like all of these mood boards on Pinterest and on Instagram and stuff and like looking at what other people are doing, what other people are wearing and then like creating all, like all of these narratives of like why the style would fit me and why it wouldn't, etc. without actually ever putting into practice practice and what's the main reason why I prevent myself from actually doing it is because I always think oh I don't have the right wardrobe I don't have the money to invest in the right wardrobe at this moment but with this challenge I did all of these sub styles all like 14 sub styles like different 14 looks 14 looks with diff each one a different sub style or a different completely different look I did that without buying a single thing except for a new wig which I barely ended up using I didn't like it that much I got some cheap nails on Amazon and some cheap charms I got myself like under lashes and that was it I didn't buy any new clothes or new accessories or anything like that I used what I already had and you might go in thinking that it's not going to look the way you want it to 
because it's not like the exact pieces that you see in like your favorite like influencers or whatever but you should still try it out and you might be surprised by how good it comes out and if it comes out horrible like at least you'll still learn something from it just even the process of getting ready in it and how you feel in it that said i would say that this is specific to gyaru like trying out gyaru i feel like some stalls are a little harder to just dive in straight without buying anything for instance lalita it's so specific that's part of why i haven't really tried it that much but also i'm just kind of like it's kind of in the past for me. <laughs> like Gyaru is a very forgiving style. Like as long as you get like the basics down, like the main like pillars of what's important, which is the hair, the makeup, the nails and the accessories. And I guess tans? which is like also questionable because there are some styles that don't require tans. All of it fits into like one hand. As long as you have like basic makeup or like some, some way, like depending on how your hair is, like maybe a wig or something like that. Like beyond those specific things, like wardrobe wise, fashion wise, it's quite forgiving. And those of you who are ghetto veterans, like feel free to <laughs> refute or like say any of your own opinions um, in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. One more thing. <laughs> Sorry, I don't wanna make this too long, but this one is the last one. Um, one more piece of advice I have is like, do Gyaru things. Um, and I think that everyone who's trying out Gyaru needs to learn some sort of para para dance because I don't know, maybe I am a little biased because I did dance for many years. Um, I'm not particularly amazing at it. I'm not like like a huge like dancer choreographer, but I do love dancing. Um, so para para was like, it was a very, like it, it connected me to the lifestyle and it like taught me a lot more than like a lot of like what I could have read online. Just like the energy that I felt, it was something that like you can't really put into words. You know, like reading like manga or like watching anime that's like featuring gals, like watching a like gals life movie, all of those that like, contribute a lot to the experience, but like learning para para is huge and essential to me. It physically forces you to move as a gal and I feel like by moving your body and like as a gal it like wakes, wakes you up or something. I don't know, it's really hard for me to explain but I think that everybody who's trying out Gyaru you should try out para para. If there's something preventing you from being able to do, like dance or move your body like maybe listen to the music or something like that. That I feel like encapsulates so much of like the culture of gal. Anyways, I hope you found this video insightful. I hope I inspired you to like try out like any of the sub styles or challenge yourself in fashion. Like if it's not Gyaru, like something. Or if you are a gal, let me know what you thought of how I kind of implemented every style. Um, I'm sure I didn't hit each one on the head. Um, I'm sure I fell short many instances, but I definitely did try my best and I'm definitely open to learning on how to improve. I had so much fun. I hope you guys found it fun to watch as well. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And as always, love you guys. Until next time.